Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem. This is a postmortem of my uh, Blitz Chess game number 174. I was black here, and um, my opponent kicks off with e4, and I play c5, the Sicilian defense. And then uh, my opponent plays uh, f4 immediately. The more um, This is the Grand Prix attack, but the uh, more usual way of playing it these days is first uh, knight to c3 and then f4. So, But f4 immediately. And then... Um, <coughs> I heard, <laughs> listening to some other chess channel, that the reason they don't play this anymore is, uh, or it's not as common, is because of the move d5, which is apparently a good reply. So it looks like e takes is the main answer. And then I was wondering, well, maybe I should play knight f6 here after after I played queen takes. And it looks like, uh, if we look at the statistics here, yeah, it looks like uh, knight f6 is a slightly better way to play it. Okay, so I just took with the queen. And then... Uh, Knight c3 hitting the queen. That's that's what made me think. Oh, maybe I should have played knight f6, like, like in a Scandinavian. Just try and recapture it. Although, uh, here, let's take a look at that for just a second. What I'm curious about here, new variation, <clears throat> is um, if white can play the move c4. And the answer is uh, he can play it, but it's not good. So I guess you treat it like a gambit. Again, similar to the Scandinavian. You just go here with e6. If he takes, you get a good development for your pieces. You're down a pawn, but this is a uh, backwards D pawn. It's not particularly uh, good. Okay, so I think I will play that way next time. <clears throat> so we go back to the game. Uh, what my oh well, let's see let's let's take a look one and one more thing. So that was um, in this variation knight f6. He didn't have to play c4 there. The opening book is suggesting the move bishop b5 check. So what do you do about that? Knight bd7 or bishop d7. I would, I would probably block with the bishop. Bishop takes, queen takes, <clears throat> and uh, then, then c4. And once again, I guess after c4 you play uh, e6. And uh, yeah, so it looks like this is still a, a decent position for black Proximate equality. So if you can equalize in the opening that easily, that's uh, probably a good way to play. So um, anyway, after d5 and takes, I took with the queen. That's that's how the game actually went. And then he plays knight c3, and it um, <clears throat> forces my queen to move again. I went to queen d8, which apparently is the main move. Um, you can't come over here to uh, a5, which is a common technique in a lot of these openings, because you've got a pawn in the way, so you just drop back. And now bishop b5 check was played, although knight f3 is a book move here. So after this, we're out of the book, so let's just look at the notation. Bishop b5 check. And this is okay. Takes, takes. And uh, <clears throat> d3, knight f3 was played. Yeah, it's all, it's all good. So white has easy development, but um, so does black. And... Um, Slight, slight opening advantage to uh, white in this position. I want to open up a line for my bishop. A3. I guess he stops my knight from coming into uh, b4. So bishop d6. Uh, this bishop becomes a target on d6. Is there a better square for it? No, no I, I guess not. Bishop d6 is a move of choice there. Okay. Castles. And knight f6. So um, there's a certain amount of maneuvering that goes on here, and, and the position remains about even, but uh, we're just trying to uh, get our pieces into the best position. Oh, let's cancel that. He played knight to uh, e4. There. Attacking my bishop and knight simultaneously, and I decided to just uh, drop the bishop back and defend the knight. So if he wants to trade, I'll get this nice looking diagonal for my bishop. Queen e2. <coughs> I castle. Knight e5. And now here was an interesting moment. I didn't want to take that knight, um, but the engine says it's a good move. Um, well, let's go forward a few moves. I, I have the opportunity for a few moves to play knight takes e5, and at some point the engine seems to think it's um, a really good idea. So first I put my queen on c7. Maybe this is the point. After the queen is on c7, I'm threatening to take and actually win a pawn there. And um, so knight takes c6 is recommended. He played c3. Yeah, so now I could actually um, 
try and grab a pawn, but it's recommending knight takes e4 instead. Knight takes e4. Um, if he takes with a pawn, then I can take on e5 and then actually do win a pawn. So he takes with a queen. And then rook a to d8. Ah, going after this backwards. Yeah, the move c3 created a backwards d pawn. So I guess this gives, this doesn't win material, but it gives black some pressure. So that's that's an interesting way to play. Um, I just went rook a, d8 immediately. I saw the backwards d pawn. I didn't think of this idea of uh, trading first. And then he went bishop e3. And now uh, here, this is the point I wanted to look at. Knight takes e5 at this point is apparently good. I guess because um, there's now two pieces in here blocking the queen's view of the e5 square. So I could take, take, take back is forced, and then take here, and I'm just uh, a pawn up. And, uh, you know, he has pressure on this pawn as two attackers, but I've got two defenders, and I guess I can hold on to it. It's recommending bishop to g5 here, or bishop to f4 to chase the queen around. Okay, <clears throat> so it's it's uh, not a full pawn advantage, but definitely a good way to play. So I, I could have just picked up a pawn there. I missed that. b6, uh, just, uh, well, I saw that he was attacking my pawn, and I just defended it. Now it looks like I, I still have some edge here. So the maneuvering continues, and uh, staying in the range of about an equal game here. I was thinking, you know, I, I allowed him to uh, mess on my pawns a little bit, but I, I have the advantage, I have the majority on the king side, and I just want to try and exchange some pawns on the queen side and try and create weaknesses there that I can attack. Uh, knight takes f6, so he trades things off, and we get into a simplified position pretty soon here. Bishop d4. And right here, b4. Well, again, my idea is to uh, trade off these pawns and try and create weaknesses, but I throw in rook takes d1 first. Um, so I could have just taken immediately on uh, on b4. And um, But rook takes d1 is actually a good move. And uh, he plays b5 here. So if you didn't uh, see the game, <coughs> well, this tactic wasn't played in the game. I just mentioned it briefly. But uh, after white plays uh, the move b5, what should black play? That's your tactical quiz for this video. So the move white is going to play is b5. And after b5, what should black play? Okay, uh, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. It's a very simple tactic and uh, clearly winning. So uh, it's, a, it's a good one to uh, sit down and think about till you find it. <coughs> I'm going to give the answer away. Okay, my opponent did play b5, and I did not play the tactic, but you see it pops up right away here on the screen. Rook takes f1 check. Always got to look for those intermediate moves, especially when they're with check. And now, uh, after either king takes or queen takes, it's about the same, um, I'm just a whole rook up because uh, he didn't recapture my rook right away. He tried to throw in an intermediate attack on my queen, but I can throw this intermediate rook takes rook with check and um, just stay a whole rook up. So, uh, so this move b5 was a real blunder, and I, uh, I failed to take advantage of it. I just moved my queen, <coughs> just doing what my opponent wanted me to do, which is always a bad sign. Then he re -grab, he re recaptures my rook. So I continue with my plan of undermining the queenside pawns here. But I have actually created a uh, long-term um, strength for white here. Um, in an endgame, this is this outside protected past pawn here. It's protected, and it's uh, outside of the other pawn. So that's that's a winning advantage for uh, for white in a pawn endgame. Because uh, without the pieces, my king will be forced to stay on this side of the board to blockade the progress of the pawn. So it gives his king a free hand to come in here and mop up these other pawns. Okay, so... Um, but the game continues. There's still rooks and queens on the board. And... Um, I get my pieces active. I make sure that I have a <clears throat> escape from my king because he's going to play this check. And I make sure that uh, I'm not going to get mated. You know, a combination of something on this diagonal and the rook here would uh, would be checkmate. So I have to keep an eye on those threats. Um, and at the same time, I'm making threats of my own. So he chose to defend the pawn with rook a4. Did he have a better move? It says g3 is a better move. Ah, that's an interesting try here. E3, defending this pawn. And can't I just take 
here. Ah, no, I can't take the pawn. <laughs> this is a nice tactical point. If I were to take here, I'll then check and queen check picks up the rook. So this uh, pawn on um, <clears throat> c4 was indirectly defended. And so white in this situation can calmly defend his uh, f pawn by playing g3. And uh, he's in good shape. And if I, it also sets up a little trap in case I decide to try and take that pawn. Um, that, that's clearly a losing move. Okay. But instead, he defended the pawn with rook a4 and allows me to grab the f pawn. And now I have a slight advantage. Queen c3, queen d6. And now um, I'm also noticing that he's got uh, some bank rank problems too. If I could just get my queen to this square, it would be checkmate because my rook is blocking the escape. So he throws in a check. I go here. And um, his queen has a check, and, and uh, so I said, yeah, you have to watch out for this diagonal. In this case, I have the move g6 to block that. And then he plays rook a6, and rook a6 is the losing move. Um, and actually, after this, you'll see it's a maiden 3. I didn't realize this in the game, but after queen d4 check, which I played, you know, almost instinctively, you see a check like that, you've got to play it. <laughs> Most natural move on the board. Not realizing it's a mate in three, but the thing is, if his king moves, it only has one move. And then rook here is checkmate. So the only way to delay checkmate for even a few moves is to play queen f2, which is what he played. But then I can just take it and mate. So it's a mate in three after this uh, check. And after queen f2, my opponent uh, resigned. So he played his queen here and then realized it was hopeless. So uh, anyway, interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I'll see you again soon.